Greetings and welcome to another episode of Modeling on the Fly with 3DS Max. Let's jump right back in and continue on... Well, actually, we're kind of to the wrap-up stage now of our at at Walker. I want to start working on this rear panel, which is still all blank. Once we get that done, we'll take a look at the thickness of the armor plates around the sides. Uh, we got a little bit of work to do back here on this back panel. We never really did anything with it, and so we'll have to do that on both sides which is not a big deal, of course. And then uh, we can start taking a look at the underside, which a lot of this is going to be filler geometry, and we have a general idea what this looks like, and it's fairly simple, but we're not going to spend a whole lot of time detailing the underside of it. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I've got a bunch of pictures of the back of this thing, but this is probably by far the best one. This just looks fantastic, except for whatever this is. It looks like some sort of caulking or foam stuff just kind of sprayed everywhere. But that's okay. We still get enough information to tell pretty much what's going on, or at least get enough information where we could start making some stuff up that would be pretty believable. So what I want to do is start with, uh, well, let's make the indention, and then we'll take a look at this shape, and I've got at least one kind of major trick uh, that I want to throw in that I, I'll warn you right off the bat. The trick I'm going to show you is ridiculously over the top. Uh, you really don't need to do it for a model like this, but I don't know. I just want to. So let's do an inset back here at the back, and we'll go by polygon. I need to press F4. By the way, I've got another color on this. I know, I keep changing colors on this. It just makes me happy. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Look at this. Look at this nastiness. So we got some uh, stuff we'll have to fix up there in that corner, but that's okay. Let's just get the overall thickness we need, and we'll click OK there. Now I'm going to grab vertices, and we're going to get these verts. I'm going to hit Z to kind of frame up on them. Now let's grab... Well, see, yeah, there's a problem there. Kitties. And the problem is that I really don't want to have to deal with something like that. That's the problem. But that's okay. Uh, kind of a nasty inset. I really wish it wouldn't do that. Wheel. I mean, I know I can just kind of average it out. I should be able to run a weld and just see how close that'll get me. See, I can get it all the way down to there. And that actually worked out a lot better than I had figured it would. I thought we'd be flying away to all sorts of random locations. So if that works so well, let's just try it over here too. And click OK. So that solves that. Then I'm going to grab edges here, here, and here. And we're just going to remove those. So it straightens all that out. Awesome. Now, if I take a look, uh, we don't really need uh, the little, well, you'll see. We don't really need this to stick back out. So the way I'm going to handle that is to grab you and you together. And I guess, well, let me get rid of that edge. We just don't really need that to be there. So remove. Faces, you and you, and then we're going to extrude these inward. So, something about like that. Click OK. Now, mwahaha. let's see, let's take uh, the cut tool. Yeah. Well, hang on. No, 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 no. Let's just take this guy and delete him. Oop. Oh. Four and delete. And is there a guy on the back or something? Oh, there's this. Well, of course. So that needs to go away. Now, let's grab this face and this face. And let's make planar in. Well, why didn't quite do what I want? Z, of course. Is edge constraint on on this again? It's like the setting that just won't go away. Yep, it is. Ha-ha. All right, well, I guess as long as you know. There, that's all I wanted to do. Just flatten that out a bit. Okay, so now back to the picture. All kinds of stuff going on here, which is all pretty cool. We've got this armor plate that kind of hangs over the back and shields all this stuff. And then we've got this other armor plate that is also very cool looking, and we're probably going to draw those out with splines and change their shape around a little bit. And then we have this great big piece 
right here in the middle. And I want to start with this big piece. And I'm pretty sure I know how I want to make this. There's a bunch of ways you could make it, but uh, you know how that goes. Now, let's see. Let's go over to Create and uh, get out all this stuff. Let's grab a cylinder. Yeah, let's do a cylinder. And let's see. Auto Grid is on. I like Auto Grid. Saves me all kinds of hassle, except when it does that. It's like a black hole explosion. Boom. All right. No. Get out of there. Um, are the normals just funky on that, you think? Let's grab this guy. I mean, if I make you planar, then what happens? Nothing, because you were planar to begin with. And, uh, I don't know. Alright, you know what? What if I was to grab a cylinder and create it right here? That would be so cheating. I love it. So we'll make one there, and then we'll just kind of pull it back out here to where we actually need it. Let's make sure that in view or world space, it's lined up in X. That's going to be really important. Now, we need to basically turn this into kind of a capsuloid shape, which we've done before with clever use of extrusion. What I really want to do is essentially create the negative space created by this, which I suppose... If we were really industrious, we could make with a tube or a pipe, whatever that's called. I go back and forth between the two. Uh, it's a tube in Max. It's a pipe in Maya. Uh, so I think we're fine with a cylinder, though. What I'm going to do is let's try to get a general idea of the radius, just kind of based off things. It looks like it's the hole here is about as wide as the opening in the back of this thing. So if we use that as an indication, then we've at least got something to begin from which will be good. So let's increase the radius to about there. And we need a lot more sides. I want this to look nice and smooth. This is kind of a showpiece. Get an even number of faces. It'll, you'll be glad that you did. And uh, I'm actually going to push that up even higher for what I've got in mind. Okay. And we don't need all those height segments. Well, <laughs> we need some height. We don't need the height segments. So let's get rid of those. Now, let's pull this up a little bit and let Max think for a minute about whatever it's doing. We'll grab that. Slide this back a little bit. Now, let's get convert this over to editable poly. Let's get face. Actually, you know what? Hang on. Let's hit for. Let me get this face and this face. We're going to nuke those out. Let's get the remaining faces. And we'll do an extrusion by local normal. And that's going to leave an opening in the center, but that's okay. It makes it look kind of like a tire. We'll fix that. Uh, let's see here. And there's some rounding there that is going to kind of go into some straight panel, flat face, edge thingies. So all kinds of cool stuff going on. So what I'm going to do is pull this down to about here and click OK. Now, let's go to edges, grab this guy and this guy, and let's do a loop, and let's do a bridge. Oh, man. Don't you love it when it does that? All right, bridge adjacent 45, no. <sighs> All right. Let's see. If I can... If I go straight across... Let's just see if this works. Now if I hit loop... <laughs> you have to kind of admire that. All right, well, let's just start right here. And then now if I loop... And deselect these guys. No, er, deselect. Now, if I bridge, what do we get? Nothing. All right. And loop. Deselect that guy right there. And you don't want to bridge. It says absolutely not. That'd be way too easy. All right. Well, if you can't beat it one way, you know, beat the crap out of it another. 
Uh, let's see. Let's grab this edge. All right, well, let's go to faces real quick. I'm going to lose this face. Let's grab this guy and loop it. And we'll shift drag this over to about here. Now, let's snap. Make sure, okay, Y axis is selected and snap that over to there. So that works. Turn that off. Grab vertices. Grab all these vertices. And do a weld, which goes from 138 down to 92, which is probably about right. That's all I wanted to do. So now everything is happy. Okay, so back over here. Now, the easy part is going to be just extending this out to get kind of this funny rounded shape. This shouldn't be too bad. The only question you need to ask yourself is if you want any kind of flat part at the very top lip of this, which I'm going to say, yeah, I do. Um, but you know, that's just kind of where I'm going. So let's see. Let's grab an edge here and let's loop that around. And let's see. That's going to... If I extend that out, that'll go out to about there. Yeah, that'll probably work. Probably. Uh, let's scale this out from itself. About like so. Probably go even further. And let's grab edges. Grab a ring. I'm actually going to deepen this up a little bit by moving these edges out. Now, if I grab this edge and I loop it, we should be able to chamfer that. Whoa! Wrong slider. Let's increase that. Okay, now there's a start for what it is I want to do here. Actually, hang on. Let's hold off on that. Just for the time being, because we got to have kind of a flat surface up here that's doing some stuff. So let's see. If I grab this face, this face, and this face, those are the topmost faces. Let's see. If we just pull these up, like so. And we make them planar, like that. Uh, let's also, just because I'm curious about making my modeling a little bit easier, let's put on a symmetry modifier. Okay, and let's go back down to polygons. Let's select with some angle. I uh, say only 10 degrees, I don't want much. I want all these faces, and let's make sure they're planar as well. All right, now, back over to edges. I want this edge, and I'm going to slide this up. Oh, we're on the correct side. Show your end result. What do you got? Yeah, I need to be over here. Okay, we need to get to right about here where the capsule shape starts to come in. We also never really made this into a capsule yet, so we need to do that. Let's do this by... I'll kind of line my viewport up as best I can. Jump back over to polygons. Get all these polys. Turn off the angle bit. Okay. Now let's extrude these as a group. And, uh, let's see. Probably need to shrink the whole thing down a little, maybe. I'm not sure. Let's just click OK, because I can always change the shape of it when I'm done. Let's grab it at the editable poly level, and it looks like that's about how far down it sits, at least in the topmost area. Now the bottom part looks like it might be hanging down a little far, but the proportions look about right. I'm wondering if this 
drive piece back here is a little smaller than it should be. Uh, that may be something we have to look into at some point. Uh, now, let's see. Just kind of getting spacing ideas. That's probably pretty close to being right. Okay, well, back in here. Let's grab edges again. And I'm going to slide this up. Come back here to this guy. Slide him up. Slide this up. And so on. And so on. Now, let's grab faces. All these faces. And let's make these planar. Now we don't want what just happened really to happen. So let me deselect that and I'll make planar from here. That should help a little. Slide those in. Now we do have a kind of a crisp angle, so we need to keep that in mind. Let's just see what happens. If I get all this stuff, and we make all this planar, and then I push all this in to make that kind of vertical once again. Now we come back up here, grab these, make them planar one more time. And then, let's see, can I speed things up a little if we do by angle and set it this to maybe 8 degrees? Yeah. So we make planar. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah, that's interesting. What else? Oh, haha! -ha. Yes! Terrible. Ignore back facing. Alright. And make planar. And grab you. And make planar. So there's kind of a little bit of back and forth until eventually. Everything really is planar. I'll grab this guy, make it planar as well. And at some point, they're going to be so close that they'll quit moving. So there we go. We should have the basis of that shape down at this point. I believe we do. Now, let's come back over here. We've got a part of it that extrudes out, and then it's going to have this, uh, well, some more planes that we can kind of play with. We'll get those right one way or another. And then uh, we'll have a chain link fence kind of look, a little hexagonal grid. And I've got a trick to show you how to make one of these. But first, let's see. If we go to faces... And uh, da, 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 da. cut that off a little bit. Let's see. Let me try something. If I get all these polygons, let's do an extrusion by local normal and by not that much. Okay, that's just to kind of thicken all that up a little bit. Now we need the cut tool. Technically, the slice plane would probably be better, but I'm just going to use cut. So we'll cut that straight across. Now I can breathe again. Let's grab polygons, press F4, and I want... Whoa, that's a few too many polygons. Turn off by angle. And let's see, we want all of these uh, out to here. Alright, and I think we can just get away with something kind of like a bevel. But let's just start with an extrusion. So we'll extrude these out. About like so. And click OK. And let's see here, if I grab edges... Let's get these edges, and we'll slide these in.
Hmm. All right. Hang on. Let me get this guy. Erg. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Symmetry modifier. I love it. All right. We need loops, but I don't want everybody here. Well, actually, I don't know. Maybe this will work. Let's just remove that. Say it's getting in the way. Make it, make it gone. All right. Now, let's grab these edges one more time. And I'm going to grab this edge, and we'll just kind of start to push this along. Actually, maybe let's not do that quite so far. Let's say we only go to about here. Yeah, I like that better. Now, I don't know how well this is going to work out for me, but either way, I won't be able to say I didn't try it. Let's make these planar. And make these planar. And we'll make these planar. And that should get it pretty close to being planar all around. Uh, the only other thing is I would grab this edge. Let's go ahead and turn on edge constraints for just a moment. Slide this up. So it's kind of helping with that bevel. Now, uh, let's see. We're getting so close to where I want to be here. Let's see if we can get away with doing an inset. And it needs to be kind of small. And click OK, and let's do an extrusion that goes inward. And click OK. And let's go out to the element level. And let's pull this down to about 20 degrees and auto smooth. OK. Yeah, I think we've got something. So we've got the basis of that shape in place. We're not we don't have a whole lot of room here to do the little uh, hexagon fence thing I was going to show you, but I still want to make one. So let me go ahead and take a second and show you how to do that. However, to make it all possible, I want to grab an edge here. This particular edge if we can get that all the way around. Actually, let me convert this whole thing back over to an editable poly, if you don't mind. Let's get rid of the symmetry modifier. Okay, now that's awesome. Now, let's get edges, and I want this edge, and I want to loop it. Cool, that's the whole thing. Now, let's create a shape from that. And I'm going to call this, oh, I don't know, fence trimmer. And click OK. A temporary shape anyway we're gonna get rid of it at some point now let's get out of here and there should be a shape right there that we could select so there it is fence trimmer and we're gonna move it out here into oh well we're gonna try to move it anyway and move it out here into space now let's frame up on it actually I want to go into a front view and frame up on it and it looks like that should have been made linearly and it wasn't so, I gotta fix that. So, let's see here. So, let's delete that. Give me this guy, hit two. Ah, let's see. Now, if we were to... Let's do it another way. This will probably be a lot easier on me. Uh, let's grab these and ring them. 
convert that to faces, pull this out as a new object, switch over to that object, grab polygons of it, and we'll extrude, actually hang on, let's not do that, let's not even do that at all, let's do a shell modifier, what am I thinking? There's a modifier for everything in, in Max, but let's use shell, and we don't want inner amount, Actually, we do. Okay. it's What it considers inner and outer, I think, might be exactly opposite of what I want. So, inner amount is what we want. We're going to make this nice and thick. And I'm still going to name this Fence Trimmer. Alright, and we're going to slide it over here into space, go to the front view, zoom up on it. Okay, now's where things start to get kind of fun, cool, and fancy. Here's what we're going to do. Go over to Create and not extended splines, we want regular splines. We're going to make an n-gon, and make sure this has six sides, because we're making a hexagonal fence. And just draw out a little hexagon, like so. Now over in your snap settings, make sure that vertex snapping is on, and that snapping is on. And we're going to move this guy, so get your move tool out. Make sure that y and X axes are selected, so click the little square there in the middle. Hover over one of the vertices and move your mouse until you see your little crosshairs for moving. Then hold down shift and drag over to another vertex. Very simple. Now, we're calling this ingon, I guess, 12 in this case, and that's not what I want this to be named. In fact, let's take this first one, and I'm going to name it. We're going to call this uh, Zachgon. And you don't have to call your Zachgon, of course. You can call it... Uh, Jeff gone or it sounds like Defcon. Okay, now let's come over here, grab this, same thing. Oop, make sure you hold down shift and snap right there. And there's Zach on two, that's fantastic. And then uh, we're going to well actually let's grab both of these. Same thing, make sure you see that move crosshair, hold down shift and drag over to here. Now we our clone options is modal, so I'm just gonna make a guess here and say if we go over like 20 total iterations, we'll make it to the other side. And we do, with some change to spare. So let's grab this, deselect our trimmer, and we're just, we'll kind of center this up, like so. Uh, come on, you. And make sure, actually turn off snapping for a minute, because that just gets in the way. So there we go, something kind of like that. Now we can grab these excess guys that are sticking through the wall, and just nuke them. Actually, no, hang on. Let's not do that. That'll just save us some hassle. You'll see why in a minute. So this hanging out on the edges is nice. We can actually pull down here to the widest point, and it looks like we've got plenty of room to kind of straddle both ends of this. Now let's come in here, turn snapping back on, start at one of the lower vertices, hold down shift, and drag up and snap right here, and 20 is probably a bit much, but we could say 16. Ooh, that got almost exactly to where we need to be. Awesome. Now, go through here and carefully... Well, you could worry about marquee selecting, or you could just not stress over it, but I would marquee select and pull out anybody you don't need. So, let's hold down Control and hit Q so we're not moving anything, and make some careful marquee selections with that added thickness of your fence trimmer. <laughs> Do -do -do. Almost done. And we need to make sure the fence trimmer itself is deselected and then hit delete. And then get any stragglers who are left behind. Including this guy. So anybody sticking out of the shape. Now let's jump over to perspective and we can't even see these guys together, so let's grab the fence trimmer, and we're going to pull it way up here, turn off snapping, because that's annoying, and we'll slide that up, because what we want is for those end guns to basically stick through that. For now, we'll leave it behind, just so we can still kind of see. All right. Now. This is where it starts to get kind of cool. I'm going to take my fence uh, trimmer and let's say 64.294. I'm going to write that down just so I don't forget it. So 
0.294, but then I'm going to copy to the clipboard, so hopefully I won't have to remember that I wrote it down. Let's grab all these guys together. Let's convert them all to editable poly. Now grab one of them, and I don't care which one. Just any one of them. So, wow, we actually get Zach on one. It's crazy. And we need to attach everybody else. So this is an editable poly. Scroll down, find attach, but hit your attach list. This is going to be so full of stuff that you'll see why we named those. So all we got to do is find all the Zach guns. So we can start here. Go down to the bottom, hold on shift, and go here and click attach. So now they're all the same object, which is great. Now go over to vertices, grab all these vertices, and do a weld. So you might have to adjust your weld settings, of course. So notice we go from 2280 down to 887. If you want, at this point, it's probably not the world's worst idea to come in, grab one of the vertices, and try to move it and see if anything splits apart. It shouldn't. And if one doesn't, you can pretty much guarantee the others don't as well. All right, so there. We've got a grid shape that will at least get us started. Now, almost finished. Not quite finished. I want you to grab all the polygons here. And we'll zoom in, and let's do an inset by polygon and give that the thickness we want our wires to be and click OK. Now I'm not going to worry about all the added faces of a bevel here so if you want to do that you can. I'm just going to do an extrusion that runs negatively like so. Now let's check out perspective and see what that just did. That gave us this that's interesting that that's actually on both sides. Because I don't want to have to deal with that. So let's see here. If I was to grab these polygons and pull them out, everybody looks happy. Uh, let's do an extrusion. Let's just try it the other direction. Let's grab a positive extrusion. Okay, that's looking good so far. So we'll click OK there. Now let's do an inset. That's okay. Now let's do an extrusion goes negatively and we suddenly end up with a second copy of everything. So if I delete that, we still end up with these guys. Oh, that's a problem. I don't want that at all. Hmm. What happens if I just delete these? Well, we get nothing. And yeah, let's cancel out of this. So delete, and all that goes away, which is good. That's what we want. Give me just one of these. I'm curious now. I'm trying to figure out what's going on here, because this is the first time I've seen this particular thing when trying to do this trick. But I'm sure we'll get to the bottom of it. So did I do... Oh, you know what? <laughs> I know what it is. Let's go uh, back over to select by angle so I can get all these guys at once. Check out our inset amount. It's just way too big. So let's set that back to zero, and then we can pull these in and everybody's happy. Wow, that threw me for a loop. Okay, so boom, that looks good. Now, I'll give that a second to process. Now we extrude and go negatively and click OK and then hit delete. And there we go. Now, we're done with that. Get out of editable poly mode. Grab our fence trimmer. Get his Z and paste it back in. So now he surrounds everything once again like he should. Let's go ahead and make sure that he is sitting right on top of the outer edge of our guy here. Let's select our geometry for the chain link fence on the inside. And we're going to go over to create and go to compound objects. Let's do a pro boolean. Make sure we're set to subtraction. Start picking. Grab our fence trimmer. Give that a second and boom. We've got a cutaway. So let's right click. I'm going to take this and just to be on the safe side, we're going to convert that back over to an editable poly. Let's slide it back here to the back. Take its, let's go to uh, its pivot, effect pivot only, center to object, boom, and put that back at the center of the world. Hit Z, and then we just need to kind of fit it into its position. like so. And 
And if you, I mean, that'll probably work just fine. But if you want to be like a little bit extra careful, if you want some extra careful sauce to put on top of everything, uh, then grab, let's see, let's get this guy. Let's grab edges. And that should already be whoever we want. So now we can switch that over to polygons. Let me try moving these over locally. And by individual pivot. No. Uh, let's see. Well, the other thing, and this is a little bit more obvious, but I didn't really want to do it this way, is you could just extrude these in, or do a bevel for that matter. So we do a little bit of a bevel. And wow, did everybody just fly away on me? It looks like they did. Get you, polygons. Um, oh, okay. So it lost the polys. That's okay. Let's get these guys, convert those over to polys, now do a bevel. There we go. Increase the height a little bit. Pull that down. Make sure this is by local normal. So all we're doing is creating a tiny little bit of overlap. And there we go. So now we've got a chain link style hexagonal fence that goes right back in there. It makes this a little different than what we've got here. We could always just make an extra extrusion, pull some stuff out. In fact, we may end up doing that, but I just wanted to show you the trick because it is so neat. And that is going to wrap things up for this video. A big thanks to everyone who, uh, who's who been watching these. And of course, to all of our member sponsors who make all this stuff possible. Uh, we couldn't do it without you guys. And I will catch you all on the next episode of Modeling on the Fly with 3DS Max. Take it easy.